involvement in the murder of a female. Tonight, Hard Copy investigates the day Gator cracked. Angry over being dumped by his girlfriend, he went looking for her, but instead exacted his twisted revenge on her best friend, another pretty blonde, and left her body in the desert. The terrible details of the skateboarder's confession. This is Hard Copy for Wednesday, May 22nd, 1991. Hello and welcome. I'm Alan Frio. And I'm Terry Murphy. Good evening. Tonight's top story, one day he was making movies. A hero to youngsters who only dreamed of riding a board the way Mark Anthony rode. And the next, as our Doug Bruckner reports, it was all downhill. Well, strange as it may seem, skateboarding actually has champions, just like baseball, basketball, football. But just as those more popular sports have athletes that have gotten into trouble, skateboarding also has a fallen hero. Kind of like an outcast. Couldn't ride on the sidewalk. You could not ride in the street. The skateboard scene. Wild young daredevils who feel the need for speed. Laughing at fear, defying authority. Like motorcycle gangs, they're rebellious. Calling themselves bandits on wooden boards. You were outlaws anyway. Next up, Mark Gator. And no one was more a representative of the skateboarding outlaw than skating star Mark Anthony, nicknamed the Gator. I am a skater. I live it. I breathe it. I sleep with it. I think he thought he was invincible. You know, he did a lot of pretty crazy stuff in his skating, outside of skating. But it was behavior so crazy he would end up committing a crime. A crime of rape, torture, and murder. A crime so horrible, he just had to confess. He came in one early morning, I think it was about 3.30, and he wanted to surrender himself. I think the reason he confessed was because, um, possibly his guilt. But there was a time not long ago when Gator was living guilt-free as one of the top ten skateboarders in the world. He was a novelty to some, a hero to most. I looked up to him as a skater because he was nice and he taught you tricks and when you felt bad, he would always be there to help you. You know, he was one of the best skaters in the world and that's a, you know, really a shame because a lot of guys looked up to him. I wonder what I'll do. Gator had it all. Fame, fortune, and a beautiful blonde girlfriend named Brandy. If skateboarders had a coolest couple, they were it. They did everything together. Skateboard videos. Okay, Mark, go! Skateboard ads. She even appeared in a Tom Petty music video. As usual, Gator got the girl. After all, he was good-looking and he was cocky. Just look at him in this video from 1988, ironically titled, Psycho Skate. Somebody came up to me and said, grow up and get a real job. You know what I tell him? Get back on your ice cream bicycle, jerk, and sell on the other street. Gator would go up to just people that he just met and would say, hi, Mark Anthony Gator, here's my card. I'm a professional skateboarder, how you doing? But in the light of all his success lurked a dark side. Friends said he was really more than just a reckless skater. We used to kind of get a little out of control. Him more so than me, I used to have to take care of him. They all thought Gator's kind of whacked. I guess he went crazy or something on them. <laughs> he was like growling and smacking his head against the window and trying to bite into the uh, Upholstery. Who knows if it was Gator's dark side that took him from having it all to losing everything. Because after four years of togetherness, Brandy broke up with him and moved out of the house. And Vision, a successful skateboard sponsor, dropped him. At the age of 24, the skateboard superstar was skating over the hill. You have to be young to do it. Yeah. Yeah, you get, you know, built up kind of like a media baby thing and then... I don't know, some people obviously can't handle it when it starts to decline or whatever. Friends say he became addicted to the wild side, binging on blonde women and booze. But it was after a skateboarding trip to Germany that Gator seemed to pull back from his walk on the wild side. He got really drunk and out of control and 
hurt himself pretty bad and realized that he was messing up. And once he got back from Germany was when he uh, kind of became reborn, you know. The street smart skateboarder became an overnight born again Christian. He started carrying the Bible wherever he went, attending this church and hanging out with this minister in training, a skateboarder with a soul. He like always like pray and stuff. And he brought like this preacher guy and they're like praying before he skates and we're just all gators freaking out. He's all of a sudden getting all too religious and stuff. He used to be really crazy and now he's you know, always got a Bible under his hand and talking about, you know, God and religion and he was he'd quote the Bible and if he'd call his house and he wasn't there, his answer machine, you know, as I recall the last one was uh, get a piece of the rock, the living word of God, the Bible. But even his pastor, Augie Constantino, said Gator's religious bouts were brief, that he'd always revert back to his original sins. Augie said Gator's mind was tortured with thoughts of suicide or murder. It was this frame of mind Gator allegedly found himself in when Jessica Bergston moved to town. She wasn't just another pretty blonde California recruit, though she was Brandy's best friend from Tucson, Arizona, and Brandy's best look-alike. They were practically twins. When Jessica and Gator met for lunch, it would be her last meal. The day Gator's mind snapped and the amazing confession when our story continues in a moment. Out to go into an insane spin and out of control. Well, you'll see signs like this in most of the warm weather states, but skateboarding enjoys its greatest popularity in Southern California. It was just another beautiful day in paradise for this San Diego beach community. People surfing, walking their dogs, skateboarding down the boardwalk. But for one skateboarding legend, it would end up a day of rape, murder, and sordid sins. Sins he would eventually confess to. I, I killed this girl, man. It would take four weeks of gnawing guilt for Mark Anthony, Gator, to finally blurt out his confession to his friend and pastor, the murder of beautiful Jessica Bergston. She was real nice. I talked to her probably, oh, beginning of March sometime, and she said she was moving out. And, uh, you know, I gave her my number, said, give me a call. Unfortunately for Jessica, she did not call Steve Schneer when she moved out to San Diego from her home in Tucson, Arizona. Instead, she called Mark Anthony, Gator. She called him that day, said she was new in town and wanted to uh, wow. have somebody show her around. And after he had lunch with her, uh, he was ready to leave. She invited herself to his condominium in Carlsbad. And they spent the evening together watching videos and drinking wine. But this is where the story changes. The district attorney says Jessica did not invite herself back to Gator's condo. He lured her back there instead with thoughts of revenge on his mind. Revenge against his ex-blonde girlfriend, Brandy. Whatever sparked his fury, the DA says Gator became enraged. He slipped up on Jessica and hit her over the head with a steering wheel lock bar. He then raped her over the course of several hours. It doesn't make any sense. I can't imagine her provoking him to be mad enough to do anything like that, and I'm sure she didn't, you know, because she wasn't like that. She's, you know, really sweet. Then the DA says Jessica must have come too because that's when things turn deadly. That's when Gator pans. They're deciding she was making too much noise and in fear that the neighbors might hear her cries for help, uh, placed her inside of a surfboard bag. And while inside the surfboard bag, uh, they strangled her. Gator drove the body up to the desert, discarding articles of her clothing out the window as he went. He found what he thought was a remote area off the roadside, dragged the surf bag through the desert dirt, and then buried the body in a shallow grave. Weeks went by. Coyotes found the body. Then what remained of Jessica was discovered by campers. They said it was just laying right on top of the ground over there. Um, they couldn't tell if it was male or female, but it was just laying there, and, and anybody driving by could have, could have noticed it. 
Meanwhile, back in Tucson, Jessica's father grew concerned. He hadn't heard from his daughter in weeks. He contacted the San Diego Police Department. He wanted to make a missing persons report on Jessica. He had felt that she may have run away or there could be foul play. He gave us a picture. She was wearing blue, uh, blonde hair, very lovely girl. I took it to the beach in newspapers. However, we didn't receive any responses at all from the community. Friends from Tucson started asking for her everywhere, including at Gator's house. I had called Gator once I found out and asked, you know, left a message on this machine, you know, have you seen Jessica, give me a call, you know, whatever. But that was it. He didn't call you back? Or? Nope, he never called me back. I called him a couple times, but he never called me back. Gator started avoiding his skateboard friends. He grew more reclusive. I called him a couple of times. The first time was solely to say, hey, let's go skate. I haven't seen you in a while. You know, because he just lives down the street from me. And he'd usually call back, but he never did. And so I just assumed he was on the road. He began skating only for church functions. Once in a while, he'd make it by the skateboard park to visit the kids. But even his little admirers said there were signs something was bothering him. It's weird to think that day I saw him until probably the last day he'll ever skate in his life. And it was weird because he had, like, bad karma. Finally, his conscience wouldn't leave him alone. And one night, as he and his pastor friend Augie were listening to a gospel radio station, Gator's nightmare came spilling out. Augie convinced him to go to the police and repent, confess everything. He was indicating to us that he felt bad for what he did do and that his conscience bothered him. And it certainly is not a Christian act to take anyone's life. It's not a normal thing. It's not a normal thing to go to the police voluntarily uh, before a crime has even been discovered. But Mark Anthony Gator was never one to do anything normal. He wasn't a normal street skateboarder, not just a typical outlaw on wheels. This is a crime committed by somebody that, you know, for what reason or another, you know, was upset enough to do it, and it has nothing to do with skateboarding, you know, and um, I just hate for Gator to be known as the guy who killed skateboarding, too. Well, I sort of doubt it will come to that. Doug, where is Gator now, and what's going to happen to him? Well, he's still in jail. The preliminary hearing is now set for June 17th, and the family is demanding the death penalty. All right, thanks, Doug.